Not too long ago, I did a video on something called Photomaker. Here is the video in question. Instantly put yourself in AI art, free and open source. Now in this video, we more or less just go over the technology and what its capabilities are. As you can see, you give it one reference image of a face. Could be my face, could be your face, anyone's face, and it can put it in any situation immediately. Now, doing this with AI is not new, but doing it instantly is. Previously, you'd have to train an entire model which takes time just on your face. Now, you can just give it one image and it will be able to create it in a ton of different styles. Now, the way that we tested this thing was by using a demo that was completely online. It was free, but after I posted it, it was flooded. The servers could not support all the people that wanted to use it at once. So today, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to install it entirely locally. This will also be completely completely free, but you can infinitely generate on your own computer at home. So let's get down to business with Photomaker. This install is going to be super easy. It's basically one click. It's as easy as installing essentially any other program would be on Windows or Mac. If you've been keeping up with the channel, you'll remember this. This is called Pinocchio. It is the one-stop shop for AI that runs locally on your computer. It's super easy to install with this thing, and the amount of stuff that they have goes far beyond just Photomaker although you can see Photomaker is directly in here. They also have something called Instant ID, which is very similar to Photomaker, but it works with things that aren't just human faces. They've also got Face Fusion, which can do face swapping and enhancing. And I mean, the list goes on, really. The amount of stuff that you can install is absolutely wild. Now, the thing about Pinocchio is that, yes, you can run your AI locally, you can do so on Windows, Mac, and Linux. However, and this is a pretty big however, your computer actually has to support the AI at hand. So you'll notice on a lot of these, it'll say NVIDIA GPU only, how much VRAM you need to run it, etc. Our situation here works both on NVIDIA and AMD to the best of my knowledge, and you'll need a minimum of 8 gigabytes of VRAM or video memory. I'll teach you really quick how to check for this on Windows. Head over to your Windows desktop. Desktop, hold down the Windows key, then press X. This menu will pop up and you'll want to go down to Task Manager, obviously click on it, and then on the left-hand side here, you're going to want to go down to Performance. You'll see a bunch of stuff in there, but typically to the bottom, you'll see something called GPU. This is your graphics processing unit, and right down here, you could see dedicated GPU memory. As you can see, this lovely RTX 4080 that NVIDIA sent me, by the way, has plenty of VRAM for this 16 gigabytes. I recommend at least 8 for this, although I think you can get away with 6. Also, a side note, I'm going to be giving away an RTX 4080 Super. NVIDIA is sending me one just to give away to you guys. It will be a contest that I'll have a dedicated video about, so you'll want to keep up to date with the channel because that's coming soon. The way you'll enter into the contest is by joining a free AI-based event for NVIDIA GTC. It'll be online and you just have to attend. You can send proof that you attended. But I just had to mention it because I'm super excited one of you guys is going to win an RTX 4080 Super. So back to downloads here. Obviously, Obviously, I'm running a Windows machine, so I'll click Windows, go ahead and download the setup. You'll see once it's downloaded, I can see it in my recent download history. I'll go ahead and click show in folder. And now we can see that our Pinocchio install folder is here. We will double click to open it up inside of the Windows Explorer. And as you can see, there's a file in here called Pinocchio setup. I'm going to drag that onto my desktop here. And now I've got the Pinocchio setup install. I'll double click this to run it. A message is going to pop up saying Windows protected your PC. I'm going to go ahead and click more info and then click run anyway. Don't worry guys, Pinocchio is trusted by the AI community at large, and I have used it countless times. Next up, it'll prompt this called settings. We can just click save, but we can change our theme from dark to light, or we can change the home, which is where the Pinocchio folder is installed. A lot of these AI files can get large. You're going to want to pick a drive or an area in your computer that has a lot of free space. I mean, it could be like 40, 50 gigabytes installing multiple AIs. We'll click save here, and congratulations, you have officially installed Pinocchio. We'll go ahead and click visit discover page, and this is where we can see everything that we can install. Of course, we're focused today on Photomaker. 
when we click on it, it'll have this little download button. I'm warning you, there's going to be a lot of downloading and a lot of waiting. It can take like 30 minutes to install just one AI thing because it has to download all of these files. Like I said, these AI downloads can just be very large. We're going to go ahead and click the download button. It's then going to go ahead and pull up this menu here telling you what you have installed and what you don't have installed. Now, this isn't the actual AI itself. It's just a bunch of prerequisites that are required to run pretty much every single AI on on the list that you just saw. So we're not downloading PhotoMaker yet, we're just installing stuff that's required for it. We'll click the install button and it's just going to do it all automatically for us, which is really nice. The reason that you don't see a lot of tutorials for local AI installs is because before Pinocchio, all of these prerequisites you had to install yourself and it would take forever and it was super annoying, but this automatically does it for you and makes it so much easier. So we'll wait for this thing to go through its processes and then we'll go ahead and continue. And as you can see, it says install complete, click OK to proceed. A prompt will pop up. Just click the download button and now we can see PhotoMaker is available on our homepage here as one of the AIs we can install. Now if you installed some other ones, they'd also appear right under this one. We'll go ahead and click PhotoMaker because we can see it's here but it's not installed just yet. As you'll see, there's this little install button right up here. We'll go ahead and click that. And now we are going to go ahead and install it. So we'll click this install button and now it's going to begin installing Photo Maker itself. And now that we've done that, we can click OK to proceed. And right here you can see it is downloading the first of many gigabytes. All right, and now Photo Maker is freshly installed. We'll go ahead up here and click the start button to start to actually run Photo Maker. And once you see this message at the bottom to create a public link, set share to true and launch, we know that it is now running locally. As you can see one line above it, we see running on local URL and then this URL, you can simply click on it and in your default browser, PhotoMaker will open up. And here we can use this thing all we want, running on our own machine, completely private. Really darn awesome. This is exactly like the demo that we originally saw in my first video. All the same options down here that you expect from your regular image creation with AI, a bunch of different templates, and of course you can upload your image. We'll go ahead and kick things off here with an image of me. For those of you who never saw the first video, essentially how this works is we upload the image that we want, aka the person you want to to generate with then down here in the prompt we would prompt it like we normally prompt AI so gorgeous headshot photo of and then when we're gonna describe it we actually use IMG as the trigger word and then this prompt recommends you put either man or woman before or after so I'll do that as well and then we can go ahead and submit it and after a little bit of a wait we have our images as you can see they no doubt definitely reflect the original image that I uploaded perhaps they did a little bit of enhancing to my facial structure and chin though I definitely don't look this good in real life now these images look great but I will say they did take quite a long time to produce and by the way if you want to save any of them you just click this little download button right in the corner there I'm gonna try another one but I'm actually gonna go ahead and decrease the output images to just one and I'm also going to reduce the sampling steps quite a bit and instead increase the style strength and guidance scale in the hope that we get faster images and let's change up the prompt as well we'll make me a lemon farmer this time all right and that was much much shorter about one fourth the original time and honestly the quality is still looking really really awesome with this so I encourage you guys to go ahead and lower the steps honestly I might even try a little bit lower here that's a way you can optimize this to run a lot more efficiently and you'll get much faster generations out of this thing because it was taking a long time but now it's a lot more usable and yeah there's me as a lemon farmer honestly probably in my true form for those of you wondering about the whole lemon thing yeah it's my logo it's like an AI generated lemon character a viewer of mine actually sent me in two boxes full of fresh lemons that are currently at my house so if you're wondering yes I do actually like the lemon fruit quite a lot all right now I want to try this thing on non-human subjects it's not designed to work on non-human subjects but I want to just give it a shot anyways all right to hopefully facilitate this i'm gonna crank the style up and 
and uh, the guidance scale will set to 7. Let's give it a shot. And taking a look at the result here, you can see it does alright-ish with non-human subjects. Definitely still got the prompt pretty closely, and the dogs are very similar, but it's definitely not the exact same dog. Alright, let's have some more fun with human subjects. One of the things it says down here on the usage tips is that the more photos you upload, the better chance you have at getting a more accurate photo, and that obviously makes sense, but you can just do one if you so desire. Alright, I fed it a bunch of images, and now we are going to have me apparently eating the world's largest cheeseburger as a world record. And hey, that actually turned out pretty good. We can see a massive cheeseburger here, and you can see me tearing the thing apart, trying to eat it. Definitely an alternate reality me. Doesn't look as much like me, I think, probably because of the crazy diversity in the photos that I uploaded, but overall, not bad at all. Still really impressed by the quality here, especially the fact that we pushed this thing to the max, lowered the number of steps, up the style strength, and the guidance scale. These are the settings that I would honestly recommend to you guys if you want to use this thing. So now let's go ahead and try someone who isn't me. In this case, I'm actually going to take Barack Obama here and try to convert him into a baby, and we'll see if this works. Check the versatility of this model. But we're still going to have Obama baby wearing a suit. Hey, not bad at all. I'm really liking it. So yeah, this thing is definitely pretty versatile. Okay, now I gotta I gotta know more. How far can we push this thing? We're gonna go ahead and upload me again, but now we're going to convert me into a dog. Hmm, looks like we pushed things a little bit too far. It thinks I'm a golden retriever, but I was hoping for some, like, weird mutation thing. I'm not exactly sure, but I was expecting, honestly. Alright, we're gonna go ahead and try one more. This is going to be me as a spaceman talking to AI intelligence. Okay, and you can see in this example, it actually made more than one of me. I'm not sure which one is the AI intelligence and which one is supposed to be me. Looks like they landed on a planet that is a, a, just a bunch of clones of me. Very interesting there. Well, there you have it, folks. That is how to install Photomaker entirely locally through Pinocchio. It's super easy, and I think the benefits of Photomaker are pretty obvious. You have very quick and easy customization of AI generations, specifically for humans. It kind of works with animals, but mostly just humans. You can put yourself in all kinds of fun scenarios. You can make professional headshots that you can actually use for profile pictures on LinkedIn, etc. And of course, you could even make some funny images of your your friends and family. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video and goodbye.